Three Play, written by John Arthur Ingram. Fade in. Exterior Woodward Park, dusk. Sun setting on a humid summer day. On the large meadow lawn, a crowd lounges with blankets, chairs, and snacks. They're facing a small stage. We see a playbill that reads, Theater Tulsa presents A Midsummer Night's Dream. Exterior backstage, wooded area, dusk. Oliver Gray waits. A tall black male in his 20s. He's a functional neurotic, so at least half the time he's a fun idealist. Oliver is wearing a recycled period costume that's struggling to cover him. He's supposed to be the sensitive lover Lysander. Sipping on a flask, he carefully paces back and forth while rehearsing lines to himself. Blake, you are the only guy I've ever felt this way about, and I don't know how it happened or... Damn it. Takes a sip. Blake, I feel like we've grown so much closer in college, and being with Sylvia has made me realize that maybe what I really want is you? Another sip. Blake, don't freak out, but I think I like you in that way, and I think maybe you do too, and I just want to know... Fuck it. Blake, I'm in love with you, and I want to look your abs. How does that make you feel? Oliver sits in surrender on a bench and looks up to a wedding mansion on a hill across the park. Then someone in an oversized period costume emerges from the forest dirt path. It's Blake Mitchell, 20s. He's attractive by anyone's standards. Frustratingly unfocused at times, you want to hate him, but then he shows that charming smile and you forget. Oliver's POV. In slow motion, Blake stops at the dirt path and begins undressing in front of Oliver. Blake gazes directly at Oliver, grins. Blake runs his hands down his abs and into his pants. When he unzips them, rose petals spread out, return to scene. None of this happened. However, the fantasy has Oliver biting hard on the lid of his flask as Blake approaches him. There he is, the sexiest Lysander in the land. Huh? You got any of that left? Oliver breaks from his fantasy and gives him the flask. They gotta stop recycling these costumes. I feel like I'm wearing Shakespeare's virginity. Uh, where's Sylvia? Still getting a costume. Nervous beat. You two lovebirds got any plans for the summer? He takes a seat next to Oliver. Blake's shirt exposes his marvelous abs. Oliver steals glances at them glistening in the evening sun. Not really. A pregnant beat as Blake avoids eye contact, fidgets. Shame? Oliver studies Blake. Is this a good time? Oliver breaks with. I gotta tell you something. Okay, what's up? I was thinking about our exceptional friendship and the incredible kinetic energy we share that's unrivaled in the history of friendships. If you're trying to propose to me, you gotta do better than that. I'm serious. I feel like we've grown so much closer the past year and I still love Sylvia, but you and I? Oh shit. This is your coming out speech. What? No. Yes. Maybe. Holy shit. Does Sylvia know? No. I wanted to see how this would go first. Oh. Did you think I'd be mad? Or stop being your friend? Not exactly. Come on, give me some credit. Damn. I'm not like these guys at my firm. I'm happy for you, really. And I'm sure Sylvia will be relieved. I mean, happy for you too. Well, wait, what about us? I mean, we could take it slow. I'm still figuring it out. Blake laughs until he sees Oliver isn't joking. Damn, I'm sorry, man. I wish I could be. I mean, if I were, then it'd be all about this. But I really love women. Funny thing, actually. Of course. I get it. No worries. I, I'm gonna go rehearse my lines uh, and find another costume to wear. Oliver exits towards the backstage door when Sylvia Chatterley, 20s, short, infectious, mean girl with a big heart, approaches him. She's in a plain period costume as Helena. Hey, honey. She gives him a quick kiss on the lips. The stage manager is looking for you. Then? Everything okay? Yep. I'm just clearly miscast. Honey, this whole play is miscast. Thanks for doing this, though. Oliver gives her the flask and looks for the stage manager. Sylvia joins Blake. Exterior backstage wooded area continuous. She takes a swig from the flask. What did you tell Oliver? Nothing. Good. Because nothing happened. And nothing will ever happen again. Exactly. But he did say something else. We should tell him after the show. Before the cast party. I can't make it tonight. Bullshit! You're running away, so I have to tell Oliver myself. No, wait. I thought we're just gonna stop and not say anything. I am not taking full responsibility for this, so you guys can reconcile everything over slut-shaming me. I am a good girlfriend, and I love Oliver. Yes, you're totally right. We'll tell him together. Yes, we will.
They both remain locked in a ravenous glare. Blake displays his charming smile. Grr, I hate you. I really don't like you either. I wish we'd never met. You and your stupid smile, and stupid toned abs, and stupidness. Yeah, and I hate your stubborn eyes and sexy meanness. A hard sex-filled beat. Then they kiss and grasp at each other. Exterior backstage, wooded area minutes later. Oliver mumbles to himself as he wanders toward the bench. He finds it empty, then sees a few bushes shifting about violently, accompanied by, from the bush, Holy shit! Oh my god! Oh my god! And a slap from the bush. Ouch! Okay, that's enough! Oliver engages the bush slowly. Hey, are you guys rehearsing? Before they can stop to answer, Oliver peeks behind the bush. Holy... what the... Is that one of the stage props? What are you doing? He backs away from the bush, shell-shocked. Blake stumbles out naked, holding his crotch. Oliver... shit. I'm sorry. Sylvia slides out naked. Her and Blake stand up next to each other, covering themselves with their hands like Adam and Eve after eating the fruit. Damn it. We really wanted to talk to you before it ever got this far. I'm so, so sorry. But now that you, uh... Saw everything. Maybe we can talk it through like rational. Hey, the good news is you're gay. That's got to make you feel better, right? To finally get that out and be out. What? When did this happen? When did this happen? Just now, and... Beat. Grand Lake? Our camping trip? Back up. You're full-on gay now. Busted. The trio are in a standoff. It breaks with... Look, we're all guilty of something right now. I'm guilty? Oliver marches away from them. Oliver! Wait, damn it. That's not what I meant. Where are you going? Sylvia punches Blake in the arm, gathers her clothes from the bush. Blake stands confused and ashamed, but mostly naked. Title card, three play. Opening credits. Interior West Hollywood Gay Club night. Title card, one year later. It's a karaoke night on a weekday. Oliver is straining to perform a love ballad. However, when the song ends and his eyes open to a handful of disinterested regulars, the reality smacks him with discomfort and anxiety. A few bartenders and the DJ give an obligatory applause as Oliver takes an uncomfortable bow, curtsy, he's not really sure which is appropriate, but the act causes him to trip and fall off the stage. A mixture of chuckles and, oh my god, are you okay, surround him. Exterior, Santa Monica Boulevard, moments later. Oliver walks to his car, listening to phone messages. Beep, voicemail starts. Hey, last night was fun. Thanks for not telling my girlfriend. Call me sometime. End voicemail. Oliver scoffs at a cute gay couple passing by, holding hands. Interior, Oliver's studio apartment. Later. Oliver enters. He opens a bottle of Jameson and collapses on the bed. Takes a sip from the bottle and checks his phone. Scrolls through photos of Blake. It's a big moment. He takes a long sip from the bottle, then begins deleting them. Interior, Oliver's studio apartment. Morning. Oliver hides under his bed sheet, shielding himself from the sunlight invading his studio apartment. His phone vibrates and he slides his arm out from under the covers, clamoring blindly for the phone. Under the sheets, Oliver answers the phone. Hello? Oliver? Is this Oliver Gray? Sits up. Blake? Holy shit, it is you! What are you... how'd you get this number? Your mom. You still talk to her? Yeah, why not? She's cool people. Background, we hear an announcer giving flight information over the intercom. And I'm not just going to ignore her if she calls me. Hold on a sec. Oliver holds the phone away for a moment as he hears muffled vomiting noises and a toilet flush. Uh, where are you? Why? Are you at the airport? Um, yeah, and I need you to pick me up. Please? Jesus Christ, why are you... Never mind. Which one are you at? Oh, uh, the LAX. I got here about an hour ago and I've been drinking ever since I got on the plane. And maybe a little before. I can't remember. I had a three-hour layover in Denver, and a nice Chinese woman bought me drinks. Okay, okay, just stop talking for a second. My head hurts. Is, uh, is Sylvia with you? Blake vomits again. Whoa, okay. I'll be there in, like, 35 minutes. Thanks, too. Conversation ends, and Oliver throws off his blanket. Oliver takes a moment to process the conversation. Frustration at first. Then a mischievous smile takes over, and he bounces out of bed. Cut to Oliver's car, freeway, day. Blake clings to a sports drink as he guzzles it down, then tosses it and opens a bottle of water. I'm here in a final act of prostration for your blessing in marrying Sylvia and to... Checks his smartphone. To... Damn it. I had this really great quote from Shakespeare. Forget it. Oliver, 
It kills me that I had to find the love of my life, my soulmate in a relationship with you, my best friend, my brother. You have no idea how much guilt I carried for a long time. But I really love Sylvia, and I want to marry her, and I can't do it without you. Wow, that was really good. Thank you. Of course you two would get married. Whatever happened to cheaters never prospered. Fox News. How much did you spend on a ticket? Not nearly as much as I would spend to restore our friendship. Blake gives that winning smile. Oliver rolls his eyes but can't hold back a return smile. Stop, stop, Jesus. You love it. Hey, I even bought you a round trip ticket. Leaves this afternoon. Wait, I haven't agreed to anything yet. When is the sniper happening? This Saturday. As in three days away Saturday? Yep. I'm a man on the ledge right now. What if I say no? Your mom. She's already expecting you. This rescue mission was her idea, sort of. Sort of? She didn't directly suggest I come out here, but I can decode her Bible scriptures. Are you sleeping with my mom too? That's all it will take? Shut up. I'm in the middle of rewrites and finding another agent. It's a crazy time. Oh yeah. She said you were writing for a TV show. It got cancelled. How long have you been talking to my mom? Since you blocked me and Sylvia from Facebook and Twitter and email and whatever else is out there. Come on, dude. It's a writer's right to write anywhere, right? So write at my wedding. Oliver glances at Blake and his cheesy hungover smile. See what I did just there? With the words, you can have them. Promise to never use that ever again and I'll go back with you. I promise. He tackles Oliver with a hug. Oliver struggles to control the car. Okay, okay, get off me. Hold on Oliver's smile of surrender. Interior, Oliver's studio apartment later. Blake is in the shower while Oliver packs and talks on the phone. Some clothes are laid on the bed. Oliver is on the phone with interior Josephine's house, day, same time. Josephine Gray, 60, steel magnolia. Sits on the living room floor with a dismantled shotgun and gun cleaning materials. Christian radio plays softly in the background. She has her phone on speaker as she cleans the barrel. How's my Hollywood writer? Intercut between them. Surviving. How are you? Is everything okay? Of course. My spirit is renewed like the eagles. I'm blessed going in and blessed going out. I put my trust in the Lord. That's great, Mom. Blake steps out of the shower with just a small towel wrapped around his waist. Oliver's gaze follows Blake to the bed where he looks at the clothes laid out for him. I'm so happy you'll be here for their wedding. It's a time for healing and forgiveness. Read Blake's body. Yes, some uh, significant healing. You got any clean boxer briefs? Oliver points to the top drawer. Blake pulls out a thong and gives Oliver a, oh, come on, look. Oliver shrugs. The Bible says, for if you forgive men when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men their sins, your father will not forgive your sins. Blake puts on the thong. Why not? Eyes on Blake. Um, wow, there's a lot of sinning men in that scripture. Oh, uh, have you spoken to Dad at all since... Interior Josephine's house day. She puts away the shotgun. On the phone. No, but I know a divorce is not what God wants. Your father knows that. He'll get tired of running around and come home. Hope you're right, Mom. I, I gotta go. See you tonight. Interior Oliver's studio apartment continuous. He ends the call, then his phone rings again. Tulsa area code number. Uh, Oliver hesitates, then ignores it. Did you give Sylvia my number too? Maybe. I I'm just not ready to talk to her yet. Too bad, because I got you both tickets to a Midsummer Night's Dream at Woodward Park tonight. Oh, God, no. I'm still traumatized by that play. Can I just stay at my mom's tonight? Nope. You two are going to talk and work out your shit before Saturday. It was her idea. Really? Exterior Tulsa Skyline Day. The conversation continues as time passes with shots of the city. Hell no! Why would I want to see that terrible play ever again? At that park? Exactly! Come on, think of it as the universe giving us a second chance. Woodward Park is where it began, and it's where you two need to get closure. You're going to be best friends in time for the wedding. The new Driller Stadium. Tulsa Euler statue. Why aren't you going with us? I have to pull an all-nighter at the office. This is about the two of you. Well, I have to work on the seating chart, so... You still haven't done that? No, 
Blake, but please ask me again in five minutes. I also had Angie back out of being my bridesmaid today. Who's Angie? Okay. What if I got some of Parker's brownies and wine? Will you two go then? Woodward Park. The stage is being set. Whatever. Oliver, thanks for taking the time to come and see us Oaky folk get hitched. Enjoy your flight, dickface. Cherry Street, Tulsa Rose Garden and Mansion. A sign announces the coming wedding between Blake and Sylvia. We stay on a photo of Blake and Sylvia. Interior, Tulsa International Airport baggage claim day. Blake rushes to the bathroom. Oliver looks around for Sylvia when Marco Silva, 20s, Brazilian-American, exuberant, approaches him, carrying his baggage. Oliver? Hey, it's Marco! Oliver puts away his phone. Marco is trying to hide his excitement and gives him a quick hug. Oh, oh hey! Wow, I haven't seen you since... since... A Midsummer's Night's nice Dream! Good times. Yeah, that was really rough. I'm sorry about you and Sylvia. And now this crazy world. The baggage carousel starts moving, saving Oliver from responding. The two of them move closer to it. What's up with you? Music. Park and I are the DJs for Saturday. I just got back from a show in New York. Wow, you live in there too? Yep, I love it. You're in LA. I'm in New York. I guess that makes us bi coastal. <laughs> Marco regrets the cheesy joke and blushes. Awkward laugh. Oliver reaches for one of his bags. Marco helps. Then, Parker Kang, mid 20s, Asian, lesbian, sporty and laid back, joins the two. Hey, Oliver, you made it! They hug. Yep. You taking good care of a home state? Trying to. Hey, I'm parked right outside on the curb. She helps Marco with his luggage. I'm really glad you made it here. Can't wait to catch up. Same here. Blake finds them, gives Marco a hug. Hey, I thought you were stuck at JFK. Yeah, I was able to grab a seat for another flight out. To S Oliver. Sweet! Did Marco tell you already? Danny rented the indoor soccer complex for us tomorrow night. A few of us lawyer buddies are going to join us. Blake pulls him close into a huddle. Late night soccer and booze, just like the good old days. I'm gay. Yeah, me too. Where's Sylvia? Exterior Tulsa International Airport, moments later. Blake is on the phone. Sylvia, in a white sundress, opens the trunk and lets Oliver put away his luggage. Finally, they face each other. It was that stupid Prince Charming smile, right? Oliver nods. It's not fair. I know. But he also put on one of my thongs, so... He proposed to me while wearing a pair of my panties. He insisted. They both chuckle. Interior Blake's car moving later. Sylvia drives, Blake rides shotgun, still on the phone. Oliver's in the back. Did Marco say anything about Angie? Who's Angie? Marco's girlfriend. She just sent me an email. Today. Today! People suck. Blake shakes his head no to Sylvia. On the phone. Mom, we already pushed the rehearsal to seven. Just grab the next flight out. Do not let him drive you guys down there. No. No. I don't want to talk. Blake Mills, kill me now to Sylvia. Hey, Dad. Lying. No, I haven't heard anything back from them. You don't have to call him, Dad. Because I'm sure he's really busy with the case right now. Sylvia tries to gauge his responses. When did he propose to you? Covering the phone. Well, like a month after you left? The couple share a confused glare into the phone. Yeah, but it's hard to tell with phone interviews, and I don't want to jinx it. Oh, I gotta take this call from the office. Bye, Dad. Wow. Ends call. Reclines back in his seat. You should let your dad call that attorney. Nepotism is not a sin if you're actually qualified for the job. And this has nothing to do with living in Chicago. I thought you hated the idea of working for your dad. They keep ignoring him. Well, there are about five ad agencies in Chicago that have everything to do with living there. It's off his look. You wanted the same thing, right? This move has dominated only 99% of our conversation. Right. Right. To Sylvia. Five agencies in Chicago? To Blake. I'm still not ruling out Miami, but your argument for Chicago was convincing. Hey, guys. What if... What if I hadn't? It's not such a bad idea to get a house here in Tulsa, and there's a position opening up at the DA's office. I can talk to... Oh, honey. You didn't get the job? Do you guys want me to drive? What? No, they're still doing interviews. Not true. Trust me, no decision has been made. I'm just thinking of backup plans. Just in case, you know. Sylvia stops the car on the side of the road, holds his hand. Where is this coming from? Because I thought staying here is plan Z, as in zero chance of happening. Seriously, I can drive. It's coming from nowhere, just thinking. Beat. Did you get the brownies from Parker? She gave me her strongest shit. Whoa. 
I haven't done that in a long time. I don't know if I can handle this rough stuff. You live in LA. They're mainly for me. Relax. You'll both have fun. Call me when you're done. Exterior Woodward Park, Magic Hour. A small stage production is set up at the head of an open meadow. They're in a scene with a foursome. Hermia, Lysander, Demetrius, and Helena. Scattered, audience watch from the lawn chairs and picnic blankets. Oliver and Sylvia sit in the back enjoying their wine and brownies, whispering. I seriously thought you might kill me during this scene. I think I blacked out at some point. I don't remember how I got through the rest of the play. God, I hate Shakespeare. I hate theater. Cheers to that. They raise their wine glasses and make a quick toast. How the hell are you marrying Blake? Cheaters don't get a happy ending. Jesus, it must get really lonely up there on the cross. Oliver takes a huge bite from a brownie, chewing. It does. She grabs the last brownie. Oliver pours the last of the wine for the two of them. Are you ready to come down from it? Start accepting all nine million of my apologies on every device ever invented? Oliver grins. The buzz is starting to kick in. Yes? These brownies are amazing. She finishes her glass of wine. A scene with Puck and Fairy King Oberon plays out on the stage. So what guy did you imagine every time we had sex? I don't know. Liar. How many guys have you been with? Just one. It was at some house party. One guy? You came out and cut me out of your life for a one night stand in LA? Well, when you put it like that. It's like a gay buffet out there. I don't want a gay buffet. I want one fulfilling cuisine. A frustrated couple turns to shh them. Sylvia rolls her eyes at them. Let's get out of here. Exterior park forest twilight. Oliver and Sylvia cross the meadow bridge over the stream and into the lush park forest. So I completely dropped the ball on the wedding list. It's all happening too fast. She leads him up a dirt path through the verdant woods. I feel like the novelty is worn out. You mean you fair? Don't say it like that. Like I'm Lady fucking Chatterley. Then. I wish I could escape the whole wedding just for a few weeks. Until I don't feel like shit for doing this. But don't get me wrong, I mean I still love Blake. Well, I could take your place. She stops and studies him. Is that what you came out of here for? No. Maybe? Is that possible? They continue walking up the path. I know you gays love to think every straight man can be changed with a hand job or sprinkle of glitter. Trust me, there's no way I could steal Blake from you. Unless... unless I became you. Ha! <laughs> you wish. That would be the only way. Because he's as straight as they come. All over my face. And that's why I wish I could be you. They laugh at the silly joke, feeling all the effects of the high. God, if I had your body, I'd start with kicking the shit out of Blake's lawyer friends. I could look as big as I feel. Respect would be implied everywhere I went. I could get paid more. I could run for office. I could run topless. Wow. No more bras. You really thought this through. Sounds like you have too. The forest illuminates around them. Oliver picks a flower and licks its petals. Sylvia caresses a tree. Both giggle and dance along the path. They hold hands and gaze into each other's eyes. You're so lucky. I wish I was married to Blake. Blake. Aw, thanks. Seriously, I wish I were you right now. A gust of wind blows through them, shaking the trees and causing glitter to fall from the branches. Oliver and Sylvia are instantly smitten by the event. They gaze at each other, spellbound. Are you doing this? I... I think so? Both laugh hysterically. <laughs> oh my god, this is so cool! Oliver gazes at Sylvia, a whisper. I wish... I wish I was Sylvia. The magical wind shoves us to black and then to exterior the park, far, the park forest next morning. Both lie asleep. Sylvia's POV. Her eyes bat open to see Oliver asleep facing her. Oliver's POV. His eyes open to see Sylvia gazing back at him. Return to scene. Oliver and Sylvia quickly back away from each other. They've switched bodies. No fucking way. Covers your mouth, then. My voice? Your voice? Ugh. Is that what everyone hears? A strangled lamb? Wow, it does sound like I'm talking in slow motion. Sylvia looks up at Oliver and touches his dark skin with white hands. Oliver looks down at Sylvia, touches her skin. The two are speechless. Sylvia waves his hand in front of Oliver. Oliver scratches at his own facial hair, then picks up the short hair on his head. As if on cue, a jogger appears around the corner and gives them a WTF look as she passes. They look like they're tripping balls. How, how did this happen? What did Parker put in those damn brownies? I can't believe it. 
Maybe we're on some sort of vision quest. I had a friend who had a bag of popcorn laced with hash oil. He hallucinated a version of himself. The wish. That was... Oh, God. Looks up. But where did that glitter come from? Oliver shoves Sylvia back into a tree. Ouch! Fuck! You did this! No, we were... Or still are high as shit. It was just a stupid wish. Well, take back the wish! Sylvia stands still awkwardly. They close their eyes. I wish I were me again. Nothing. I wish I were Oliver. Nothing. Damn it! How did it work? What did you do? The brownies. Right. Give me my phone. Wait, we just ate her whole batch last night, and her dealer's out of town. Can't she just find another dealer? Not with that specific strand or blend or whatever the fuck they call it. This is why I don't do drugs. You live in L.A. Sylvia's phone vibrates. It's Blake. Give it to me. She hands it to him. On the phone. Hey, honey, um... Oliver? What's going on? Where's Sylvia? Sylvia? Sylvia plays with her hair, touches her breasts and ass, examining her whole body. Uh, we have a situation. Oliver slaps her hands away. To Sylvia. Stop that! Is everything okay? Where are you? Then Oliver stares at his crotch, tries to peek inside his shorts, pokes at it. Hey, where are you? Uh, yes, everything's fine. We're at the park. Did you stay the night there? Just come get us. Ends the call. I feel like I'm floating. They walk awkwardly up the path, trying to find the rhythm in their steps. It's like walking on 30 pound stilts. How did you see anything from down here? Sylvia tries to look under her dress. There's so much space down there now. Stop doing that, it looks creepy. You were sneaking pics at my dick, and you wanted this too. Spoiler, I'm getting married in two days. I didn't mean it literally. Neither did I. Yes, you did. And why would you want to be a 95 pound white girl anyways? A 98 pound white girl who cheated on me and is now marrying my best friend. Oliver shoves her back into the bushes and storms off. Exterior Woodward Park, parking lot, morning. Sylvia joins Oliver at the curb as Blake arrives in his car. Across the parking lot and up a hill is the wedding mansion. It looms down at them. I'll be damned if I let you fuck up my wedding day, so let me do the talking. The car stops in front of them. Hey honey, can you step out for a second? Uh, we need to tell you something. Blake gets out of the car, anxious. What happened? Oliver glances at Sylvia. Honey, we... So those brownies we had? Um... He grabs Blake's hands. At Sylvia. What's going on? I need you to trust me and listen. We got really high last night, and I think the come down effect has us believing that we've switched bodies. Blake laughs. <laughs> wow. I knew this would be good for you guys. So we're all good now? Blake pulls them in for a hug. No, Blake, you're not listening. I can't marry you like this. I'm stuck inside Oliver's body because he wants to be me. And he made a stupid wish, and now I don't know how to undo it. Blake and Sylvia just glare in bewilderment at Oliver. To Sylvia. How much did he eat? She shrugs. To Oliver. Dude, you're having a really bad reaction to... To Sylvia. O Oliver, tell him! Both look at Sylvia. She looks back and forth at them, then glances up the wedding mansion on the hill. Struck between a dream come true and what surely will be its tragic conclusion, Oliver, in the body of the bride-to-be, chooses. Yeah, it's a bad reaction. Should wear off soon, plus the jet lag. A lot has happened in the past 24 hours. She holds Blake's hands. We'll be fine. I promise. Oliver's beside himself. Ha! With fury and terror, he can only manage to whisper. Bitch! And then breaks down into weeping. Crouches down on the curb. Blake joins him. Sylvia watches anxiously. Whoa, easy, easy. It's okay. I'm sorry I kidnapped you like this, but it means so much to me that you're here. I need you, man. I can't handle this broad without you. Yeah, I can't either. Oliver looks at Blake. It triggers something in Oliver's mind. He wipes the tears and stands up. You're right. You do need me. To Sylvia. We'll be fine. Great! Let's get you home. Sleep off the jet lag and I'll come get you tonight for the bachelor party. Okay, but can we please grab something to eat? My stomach is eating itself. Agreed. Blake gets in the car. The duo both make a move to the passenger door. What are you doing? It's gonna look weird if I don't sit up front. You better hope this wears off before tonight. Sylvia slides into the back seat. Oliver attempts to get into the passenger seat and bangs his head on the frame. Fuck! Ah. Oh shit, you alright? Just get us to the fastest heart attack meal. Interior Blake's car moving, morning. Oliver and Sylvia are feasting like wolves on burgers and fries while constantly adjusting their bodies. Blake just chuckles at the sight. Then... Well, how was it? Fine. Where did you go after the show? 
Sylvia drops a fry down her dress, hesitates, then reaches down her dress. Nowhere. We just lost track of time. To Sylvia. Okay. Well, you gotta pick up your brother and Maggie. Then I gotta grab the rings. And don't forget the seating chart. Now she's peeking underneath the dress, immediately turns red with shame. Oh, yeah. Are you gonna do that? Blake gives her a WTF look. And confirm the arrival time with vendors. Meet with the photographer. Pick up the dress. Fuck. I need to break in the... Sylvia needs to break in those heels and give the caterers a revised guest list. What? I thought you said... Yep, she did. To Sylvia. Oops. To Blake. Uh, I'm sorry? Tell that to Maggie, cause she's going to murder you. Blake tries to contain his fear, grips the steering wheel. Shit. To Oliver. Dude, this is why I need you here. Maybe you can help Sylvia with the list, and keep her alive until Saturday. Wickedly. We'll see. First, I need to talk to Miss... To Sylvia. My mom. I need to catch up. Yeah, of course. Exterior Josephine's house later, a well-kept one-story suburban home. Blake parks the car at the curb. Oliver hops out and grabs his luggage from the trunk. You need help? Nope, I got it. Sylvia gets out of the car. I should really say hi to my... Uh, Mrs. Gray, too. We're already running late. To Oliver. I'll pick you up at 8 for the bachelor party. Oh, shit, that's tonight. Oliver glances at Sylvia. Yep, it's gonna be awesome. Blake gets back in the car. To Blake. Just let me say hi to her real quick. All right. Sylvia walks with Oliver toward the front door. Listen, I haven't come out to my mom yet, so you can't say any... Just don't talk to her at all. Fine. You can't sit with Blake. Don't touch him. Don't look at him. Fine. Before Sylvia can knock on the door, Josephine Gray answers it, holding a shotgun in her hand. Whoa. There's my baby boy. She gives him a hug and a kiss. Hi, Mrs. Sylvia nudges him. Mom? Hi, Mom. Blake shuts from the car. Hey, Mrs. Gray. You're looking good. Thank you, baby. Are y'all hungry? I can make something for you. I just wanted to say hi and see how you're doing. I'm doing fine, thank you. What's with the shotgun? I was just cleaning it. I took the day off so we could go to the gun club. To Sylvia. Great. I feel like shooting something. Go get cleaned up. I want to be there by a lot. Wait. Oliver has a girlfriend. Uh, he was just telling me about her and how he can't wait to someday introduce you to her. Oh. Well, I want to hear all about her. Yeah, but she's out of the country filming some documentary, so you won't be able to contact her for a while. To Oliver. Happy shooting. Sylvia kisses Josephine on the cheek and rushes back to the car. Girlfriend? His mom doesn't know he's... She shakes her head no vigorously. Interior Blake's car moving day. Blake drives. Sylvia's focused on her image in the mirror, twirling her hair, glancing down the top of her dress. Are you still high? Huh? No. Maybe? He reaches for her thigh. She pulls away. What are you doing? Off his look. I'm sorry. She grabs his hand and holds it close to her. Blake smiles. Interior Josephine's house, Oliver's bedroom, day. Oliver drops his bags next to the bed and gazes around at a room practically untouched from the early millennium. A reassembled photo of Oliver, Blake, and Sylvia in a production of A Midsummer Night's Dream. Oliver looks at it. He attempts to pull it off the wall, but it rips. Of course. You should shower first. She stands at the doorway, dressed and carrying her shotgun. Oh, yeah, I will. So, who's this young lady that you wanted to tell me about? Um, well, there's not... Oliver glances back at the ripped photo, then looks at the excitement on Josephine's face. She's no Sylvia, but close. Aw, poor thing. I miss seeing you two together, but I knew in my spirit she wasn't the one for you. Me too. She gives him a tight hug, then exit. Hold on Oliver's despondence, which leads us to our first obligatory montage. Oliver opens his luggage, going through his male products. Attempts shaving his facial hair. It's not bad until he cuts himself a couple of times. Showers and examines his body. Amused. Confused. Exterior Tulsa Gun Club, 11 a.m. Josephine drives her green SUV down a dirt path toward a parking lot in front of the shotgun range. She parks, gets out, and immediately searches for someone. Oliver struggles to get their shotguns and gear out of the SUV. How do you carry all these by yourself? Mrs. Gray? Mom? Josephine tries to compose herself and grabs the gear from Oliver swiftly as a handsome middle-aged man in a well-kept ranch-style attire approaches. Dark and rugged, he's wearing a company cowboy hat. Josephine is glowing. Let me help with that. <laughs> oh, thank you. 
He takes the guns from Josephine and sets them on the bench with the ammo. Oliver observes their interaction. Then... I'm glad we got here at 11. This is Mr. Kendrick. He's one of the new managers here, and he attends our church. William Kendrick, pleasure to meet you. Oliver, right? Yes, very nice to meet you. Your mother's always singing your praises. He eyes Oliver's facial scars. Try a new razor? What? Oh, yeah, new razor. Oliver gives Josephine a teasing smile. Josephine returns it with a don't you dare say a word look. Okay, I'm gonna go set up at the other site. Let me load it up for you. Nope, you stay here, I got it. He leaves Josephine to her lover boy. Blake's car, Tulsa Airport Terminal, moments later. Sylvia waits in the car, anxious, then tries to call Oliver. Voicemail again. Damn it! Exterior Tulsa Gun Club, clubhouse, day. Oliver's blasting away at the skeet like a pro. Pull! Bang! Crash! The skeet explodes. Pull! Bang! Crash! He's on fire. Damn, this feels good. Puts the shotgun away and checks his phone, then heads toward the clubhouse. Interior Blake's car, day. Sylvia's phone rings. On the phone. What are you doing? Intercut between them. Oliver is watching Josephine through the window of the clubhouse. Josephine fires a shot and hits the clay pigeon. She tries hiding her excitement as Mr. Kendrick applauds. On the phone. Shooting, Skeet. I can't believe you never invited me to do this when we were dating. I can't believe she still does it. On the phone. You had no idea she'd be coming out here by herself? On no. the phone. No, she usually waits till I'm in town and drags me along. I hate shooting Skeet or whatever it is. Then Josephine pulls out a sack lunch from one of the bags and gives him a sandwich. On the phone. Oh, Mrs. Gray, such a sneaky little vixen. On the phone. So did you out me? On the phone. No, your faux girlfriend is still alive. Thank God. Listen, I think we should meet up before the bachelor party tonight and figure out this wedding shit. Why? It's your job now. Good luck. <sighs> Sylvia, please. Oliver ends the call. Interior Blake's car, same time. Sylvia sees a frustrated woman marching toward the car. She gets in, slams the door. Maggie Hale, maid of honor, self-proclaimed wedding planner, 20s, sulks in the back seat. Hey, Maggie. Um, are you okay? Your brother and I are officially separating after this. My brother? Sylvia sees Danny and Blake carrying the luggage toward them. Yes, your monastery-bound brother. Shit. What happened? I'll explain later. Seeing Danny approaching. Quick, sit back here with me. Sylvia gets out and hops in the back seat next to Maggie as Blake and Danny load the luggage in the trunk. Exterior Blake's car moving later. Danny Chatterley, 30s, short, desperately pious. Rides shotgun. Blake drives. Maggie steals glances at Danny but refuses to acknowledge his existence. So, how was the Bible seminar? Powerful. Great guest speakers. I really feel that calling to the ministry. Sylvia listens, texting, confused. That's great. Are you still doing the... No sex experiment? Celibacy. It's not an experiment, man. I'm dedicated to remaining sexually pure. And not just for the seminary. I want to do this. Maggie scoffs, rolls her eyes. Just don't wear one of those rings or I'll have to slap you. To Sylvia. Did Oliver show up? Yeah, he got here yesterday. You owe me 20 bucks. Why? You bet he wouldn't show. Are you serious? I know, right? Now we have to add him to the seating chart. Sylvia nods, looks out the window, bewildered. Exterior Tulsa Gun Club, day. Oliver exits the clubhouse and walks back towards Josephine. He reaches Josephine and Mr. Kendrick. They're sitting at the bench, eating lunch. That was some fine shooting over there. Thanks. But your mother is the best shot I've seen out here. Be careful. Thou shalt not bear false witness, Mr. Kendrick. There's nothing false about what I witnessed, Mrs. Gray. Damn, that was hot. Stepping back from William. My husband taught me how to shoot. When he returns, we'll continue our training. He's just been distracted by things of the world. <laughs> I understand. He gets up to leave. Thank you for the delicious sandwich and company. Again. Josephine smiles faintly. Oliver just gives her an incredulous stare. Then William adds. You should remember, Mrs. Gray, if any man does not provide for his own, and especially for those of his household, he is denied the faith and is worse than an unbeliever. You don't have to wait. To Oliver. Nice to finally met you. Yeah, you too. And he struts away to the clubhouse. Are you kidding me right now? Loading a shotgun. Let's go to the target range. Good idea. I want to go first. Exterior downtown hotel park, day. Blake parks in front of the lobby entrance and gets out with Danny. Maggie remains in the car. 
pulls out her tablet and checks the list. I changed our reservation to another place tonight. Parker says downtown has really come up. It's all rejuvenated or whatever. Through the lobby entrance, Sylvia checks out Marco chatting with Danny and Blake. Marco looks delicious in his tight shirt and jeans. And I got us reservations to one of the new clubs tonight. Their bottle service better be the shit, because I've just spent a month's rent on it. God damn, how hot is Marco right now? Too bad he's straight. What? Uh, straight out of a relationship. That's so sad. Looking at Marco. Yeah, poor guy. Hey, you're maid of honor, right? Oh god, you want me to do the seating chart too? Who did you cut this time? What? No. Well, I might need help with that. I just need you to catch me up on everything, like vendors and the photographer and the dress and my heels. Where are we with all that? Why didn't you say something before? I could have flown in last week and avoided Danny's stupid seminar. Look, I got really high last night with, uh, Oliver. Parker's special brownies, so I'm not myself now? Can we just go over everything that needs to be done? Please? Off Maggie's look. What? I knew this was all happening too fast. You're not ready. He's not ready. It never felt right. Now look at you. Yeah, I know. Your entire marriage is built from betrayal, jealousy, deceit. All the things that should happen after you're married. Now your vows and your wedding bed are cursed. Wow, uh, trust me. Things are completely different now. I'm sure it's not a curse. Are you sure? Because I can't handle two failed marriages in one week. Resolute. Yes. This is literally a wish come true. Okay. Run home and grab your stuff. Come get me and we'll get everything done. Thank you. Then? Hey, how long are the guys going to be at the indoor place? Who cares? Interior Josephine's SUV moving later on. Josephine drives. Christian music radio on. Oliver rides. Quiet. Texting. Then? That's the best shooting I've ever seen you do. I'm glad you finally taken a liking to it. Well, a lot has changed. Feet. You looked really happy. Text from Sylvia. Do not play soccer tonight. Love is more than just happiness. It's hard work. Investing. Nurturing. And occasionally there's passion and romance. Oliver ignores it. Your father was a hard worker. He understood. But that guy was I f loving you so much. That's how it works. You're supposed to feel that intoxicating and torturous desire for someone. It should always st start that way. It's God's... Is that how you felt about Sylvia years ago? Covetousness? Is that the love you describe? True love is selfless. And Josephine completes the combo with a KO. Blake and Sylvia's apartment later that day. Blake stops the car in front of the apartment, waits. You're not coming in? I have to pick up the rings and tuxes. You and Oliver are going to tackle the rest of the list, right? Oh, actually Maggie's going to help. Seriously? She's not pissed? Yeah, everything's cool. Awesome. Then I can have Oliver ride along with me. Shit. What? Uh, nothing. Just don't let him play soccer with you guys tonight. He's really out of form now. Uh, he'll be fine. He catches her by surprise with a kiss on the lips. Sylvia blushes. Good luck. And have fun tonight. Sylvia stumbles out of the car, grinning, glowing. Interior Blake in Sylvia's apartment bedroom moments later. Sylvia opens the closet, smiles wide at a collection of fashion possibilities. A sexy pop diva song plays over our next montage. Singing in the shower, examining her body, overwhelmed by the feminine products, entangled in her long hair. With a wet mop of hair, she dances and showcases different looks and outfits in front of the mirror. Prances around in heels, trips. Searches through photos, yearbooks, and wedding shit with Blake. Plays with all her makeup and hair. It's like a 12-year-old's attempts at an adult look. The adding of the tiara ends our montage. Interior Josephine's house, Oliver's bedroom, same day. Oliver is sprawled out on the bed, asleep, snoring. His phone vibrates several times. Finally, it wakes him. Jumps up, falls off the bed, looks at himself. Fuck! Exterior Josephine's house, moments later. Oliver maneuvers his large gate towards Blake's car. He's getting a little better at balancing his weight and height. You feeling better? Where's your stuff? Huh? You're staying at the hotel tonight. We'll come back for her, come on. Interior Sylvia's car, moving, day. Sylvia struggles to see over the steering wheel and maneuver through traffic. How the hell does she do this? Exterior downtown hotel later. Sylvia brings the car to a screeching halt. 
Maggie waits at the curb. She opens the door to see the horror of Sylvia's hair and makeup. Gasp. What the fuck? Why are you... Who did... Just drive. I have some olive oil. I'll fix it on the way. Interior Sylvia's car moving day. She drives while Maggie applies the olive oil. It's a death wish. Stop. Can you wait till we get there? No. You look like an episode of Toddlers and Tiaras just vomited all over you. Why are you even wearing makeup now? You hate it. I don't know. Where am I going anyway? Interior jewelry store day. Oliver grabs an impossibly impeccable diamond ring, examines it. Aw, elation. But this is... I thought you couldn't... Sweet, right? She thinks I couldn't get her first choice. Damn, I can't wait to see your excitement. She's gonna freak. That excitement is happening right now, in Oliver's pants. The jeweler appears from the back, immediately sees it. Our diamonds often have that effect. What? Now they all see Oliver's massive erection, but he's still enamored by the diamond ring. Dude, put that away! Oh my god, how... how do I make it go down? Just go sit down over there. He snatches the ring from Oliver. You should put a ring on that too. They glance at Oliver, slapping down his erection. Re rings. Thanks. Blake maneuvers around the erection and leads Oliver out of the shop. Interior wedding boutique day. Maggie leads a frazzled Sylvia into the boutique to find Parker waiting. To Sylvia. Hey, I tried on... Whoa. Ignore it. Let's get her in the dress and heels. Interior wedding boutique viewing room day. Parker and Maggie wait in their bridesmaid dresses near Sylvia's dressing room. Checks her phone. Sylvia, what the hell are you doing? I... I don't know. I'm coming in. No, no, I got it. I heard about you and Danny. Are you okay? Why do God and Danny get to make decisions about our marriage without me? Eh. God is kind of the original homeworker anyway. He screwed Mary behind Joseph's back. I expect better from a God. Exactly. So unimaginative. At least Zeus put on a costume first. Sylvia emerges in a white strapless dress with a short train. Awesome. Still fits. Now try the heels. Sylvia is enamored by her reflection in the large mirrors. She steps closer to it and touches her image. I'm so... white. Maggie pulls Sylvia away from the mirror and gives her the heels. Break them in for a minute. Sylvia wobbles a bit at first, but surprisingly finds her rhythm and struts about in true diva fashion. Parker grabs her phone and takes a photo. On the click, we cut to interior tuxedo shop, same day. Oliver posing with Blake, Danny, and Marco, all sporting their tuxedos. Oliver can't keep his hands off Blake. He keeps crowding the photo with his big frame. Interior Blake's car moving, evening. Blake drives. Oliver is fixated on the rings. How did you pay for this? Oh man, you remember we drove down to Dallas to see Liverpool play Roma for their summer tour? No. You were dating Sylvia at the time and she bought us tickets for your birthday. Oh, that thing. Yeah, Steven fucking Gerrard signed her jerseys. Who? Captain Fantastic himself! Holy shit, that red jersey you had framed? Thought you sold it to pay off the rest of your student loan debt. Nope. Wait, how did you know about that? Beat. Because... I... Please just trust me. I bet Sylvia told you. What else did she say? Is she getting cold feet? Shit. You guys didn't have sex at the park, did you? No. Ugh. Why would you think that? Good. Because, you know, with our history, and I just want to make sure you haven't changed back to... Is that possible? Off his look. What? I love you either way. Just want you to be happy. Oliver glances at the rings again, an idea is formulating. Hold on Oliver's sneaky grin. Match two, Sylvia's game face. She stands in the interior south room reception hall, the seating chart future, and stares down five tables, ten guests at each. Right now, it's loud and contentious. Okay, give me the rundown. Who are these people? Most of them are Blake's family, since you asked most of yours. Right. Let's start with all the toxic people. Sylvia walks towards table one. Liberal aunt and conservative uncle are leading the divided table guests in a brawl, one side in red, the other side in blue. Liberal aunt grabs a butter knife and climbs onto the table, freeze frame. Is that Blake's aunt Helen? Yep. This wedding will be the first time both of them have been in the same state since the fight they started at our high school graduation. The Great Crawl of Zero Four. Eh, that ended my affair with Lauren. You were banging Quirk the Smirk? 
still miss those thighs. Unfreeze. Whoa, Helen, stop. You and Uncle go to the front. Both do as they're told. Table two, a pale male is holding a guest in a tight hug. He lets go and the guest turns cold and limp, slides out of the chair. Several others sit like tired zombies. Ah, this must be our emotional vampire. Blake's cousin from Ohio. He's like an emo Hannibal Lecter. He's like a suicide note laced with Ebola. Sylvia pulls emo vampire away from the table and directs him to the front. Quick cuts. Table three. The wedding judge holds court over two frightened couples. Sylvia takes the gavel from her. Table four. The romantic anti-hero lights a bouquet of roses on fire and he gleefully taunts the guests with it. Table five. The misanthrope hipster pours a vase of ice water on a guest. Everyone else has suffered the same fate. It's like rain. She stops and shows us a stark glare. Interior south room reception hall, the seating chart future. Sylvia paces down the line of our toxic wedding guests. Leading liberal aunt, table five with retired journalist. Next. Uncle conservative, table three with army vet. Next. Emo vampire. Let's put you with officer sociopath at table two. And finally. Romantic antihero and misanthrope hipster. Hmm. You two can sit with the drama major and lawyer douchebags at table one. Everyone surveys their tables, satisfied. Interior bridal suite night. Parker applies Sylvia's makeup and hair. Maggie lays out the seating chart on her tablet. And the rest of us are at the long table, right? Yes, sir. So we're good? Yep. Yeah. I'll just email this to each of the vendors and we can party. High fives all around. Exterior Josephine's house, night. Oliver exits the house carrying the overnight bag and wearing a full-on soccer gear. Like a model showcasing the latest in soccer fashion, he sways his hips and struts past a baffled Blake and straight into the back seat door of Blake's car. Danny and Marco exchange confused looks. Exterior downtown hotel, night. Sylvia leads the ladies into a limo. Interior Blake's car, moving, night. Danny drives, Blake in shotgun, Marco and Oliver in the back seats. To Oliver. Are you okay to play? Yep, ready to kick some lawyer ass. Why are you dressed like that? Shut up, Danny. I like it. Thank you, hon. Interior trendy club, VIP, night. Sylvia leads the girls back to their booth, exhausted from dancing. To Parker. Hey, do you have an extra pair of shorts and studs I can wear? Yeah. Why? To Sylvia. No. Exterior indoor soccer complex night. The car pulls into the half-empty parking lot of a two-story warehouse. Several soccer players exit the building in their team gear. Interior indoor soccer complex field. Danny and Marco pass the ball back and forth while Blake greets his lawyer friends on the other team. Oliver steps onto the field and attempts yoga stretches and poses. It looks painful and extremely awkward, but he's determined to make it work. The other guys finally notice what Oliver's doing and stare at him, confused, annoyed. Marco holds a lusty gaze at Oliver, then quickly catches himself and looks away. Danny goes to Blake and asks, What happened to him in L.A.? Blake sighs and approaches Oliver. Hey, uh, what are you doing? Straining. Stretching. I don't want to pull anything while kicking ass. Right. Well, can you tone it down a little? Tone what down? Blake glances back at his lawyer friends. Oliver sees this and gets it. He stops stretching. Wait, you didn't tell them? You've been gone and I didn't know if you were, you know, how it is here with these guys. They'll never let up. Look, forget it. Let's just play. Blake turns back to the others and grabs the ball. Okay, shots below the knees only. Ten minute halves, golden goal, and we get ball first. We should play butts up or ball first. You'll lose, and we'll get ball first anyway. Might as well bend over now and let me drill a volleyball up your ass. Blake follows a shot at him. The guys laugh and continue joking around as the game begins. Lawyer buddy number two starts the clock on the scoreboard. To himself. I need to tone it down? Then a pass comes to Oliver, and he kicks it as hard as he can. The ball whizzes past Blake, who quickly dodges out of the way. The ball continues into the side dugout area and off the field. Everyone gawks at Oliver. Marco laughs, and the game continues. Interior, indoor soccer complex field, moments later. Everyone is playing fun, competitive soccer and showing off skills. Except for Oliver, of course. He just sweats and jogs back and forth, occasionally attempting a kick. Finally, out of frustration, he shoves one of the lawyer guys into the fiberglass wall. What the hell is wrong with you? Do you want me to tone it down for you? The lawyer guy stares at Oliver, but realizes the size difference. Oliver towers over him. He backs away from Oliver. Blake and the rest of the guys laugh. Clock alarm sounds to end the first half. Oliver grins and staggers toward the dugout, sucking air to breathe, sweating. Blake meets him there. So I was thinking maybe you should sit the next half out. You don't look so good. Gasping. 
I'm good. I just... Dude, it's cool. Brilliant. We'll be okay without you. Go change and have a beer. Blake runs back out onto the field before Oliver can object. He downs a thermos of water. Interior, indoor soccer complex, concession, moments later. Oliver is at the boot. The guys continue their game. Where's the hard stuff? Just beer. Desperate. Why? Dude, you're getting beer all night on the house. Sylvia enters wearing a sports bra, soccer shorts, and studs. She lights up at the sight of Blake and the guys playing. Maggie and Parker enter, sniffs with delight. Sweaty men. Smells so good. Both meet Oliver at the dining area near the stands. Oliver sits and takes sips of his beer, crosses his legs, then sees Sylvia. Oh, God, you gotta be kidding me. Why are you playing? I was kicked off the team. Maggie and Parker join him. On the field, Sylvia steals a pass and begins dribbling around the guys, then stops to juggle it for a few beats before volleying it past the goalkeeper. Collective gasps. Wow, I needed that. Sylvia, what are you... When did you learn to play like that? There's a lot you don't know about me right now. That was the sexiest thing I've ever seen in my life. I want to make love to you right now, on this field. Really? Wait, oh shit, I'm feeling nauseous. Jesus, that happened fast. She collapses into his arms. How much did you drink? I had, it was only like a few martinis, I think, and a little champagne. Martinis? You know to stay away from those. Hey, get off the field. This is guys only. And I'm ready to play again. No, you're not. Stay over there. Come on, Sylvia. We can still make our spa appointment. Blake carries Sylvia off the field. She soaks up every moment of it. Dining area. Oliver suffers through the rest of his beer. He drops her off. Maggie gives her a bottle of water. How long have you been practicing that? She glances at Oliver. Not long. I... I got lucky. Gives her a deep kiss and goes back to the game. Are we done here? Yeah, just give me a minute. I'll meet you out there. Maggie and Parker exit. This is still a gay sport ever. I got everything on the list done. Sylvia grabs some snacks. Damn, I was really hoping Maggie would kill you. Chewing. I even finished the seating chart. Bullshit. In one hour, while getting ready for tonight. Ugh, wish I could thank you for that. But? All this time you weren't mad at me for cheating. You were mad that I took Blake from you. That's the same thing. You know what I mean. Oliver grabs Blake's bag and digs out a pack of cigarettes. But there's one thing you forgot in your fairy tale. While you were gone, they legalized same-sex marriage in the state. Sylvia glares at Oliver. No way. He's... But he's as straight as they come. Oliver grins. Honk! Sylvia's ride beckons outside. Run along, Cinderella. It's almost midnight. Sylvia starts to leave. We can still switch back at any time. We don't know how it works. Why? I'm just starting to have fun. Interior downtown hotel, spa, night. Maggie and the gal stand in front of the closed doors of the spa. Maggie begins kicking and pounding at the door. Parker and Sylvia pull her away. Hey, calm down. We'll just come back in the morning. There's a hot tub. Parker, I need Molly. No. Parker, please. I'm not your fucking dealer anymore. Molly? Oh. Exterior front of complex, night. Oliver leans against the wall, slowly enjoying a cigarette. Blake finds him. Hey, what's up? Are those mine? Yep. I knew you'd have them. He gives the pack to Blake. He takes one and lights up. Sylvia and I decided to quit last month, but I figure for tonight, you know? Oh, I'm sure she has her own secret stash somewhere. Yeah, probably. Hey, let's go to the center of the universe. Sure, I'll tell the guys. No, just us. Come on, they'll be fine. Okay, let, let me leave some cash for their cab. Oliver pulls him toward the car. Exterior downtown hotel, pool, night. Parker and Sylvia sit in the hot tub across from Maggie on Molly. She wades her hands across the surface of the water. I can see the whole universe. Feel the pulse of the galaxies. White people in their ecstasy. Parker glances at her. Sylvia catches herself. Oh, right. I'm... Parker laughs. No, it's cool. Both share a laugh. The hot tub jets come on again. Panting. I pray thee, gentle mortal, sing again. Mine ear is much enamored of thy note, so is mine eye enthralled to thy shape, and thy fair virtue's force perforce doth move me. On the first view to say, to swear, I love thee, I love thee. Maggie looks up at the clear night sky. Match cut to the same night sky, over. 
Exterior, center of the universe, night. Yep, it's a real place in downtown Tulsa. A brick circle on a bridge that is located directly over the railroad tracks in the center of downtown. Tulsa's illuminated phallic gods surround Oliver and Blake as they stand huddled together directly in the center of the circle. When they speak, only their voices can be heard. The sound immediately bounces back at them. I love hearing your voice when we're standing here, this close. Uh, is that why you wanted to come here? They face each other, eyes searching for answers. Blake's eyes, circles of fire spiral around the reflection of Oliver in each of his pupils. I proposed to Sylvia here. Oliver's eyes, wide, bursts of light, explosions of fire and ice. I know. I was there. Oliver has Blake smothered in a lusty embrace before Blake can react. The couple tumble out of the circle and toward the guardrails. Blake finally shoves Oliver back, both gasp for air, regaining balance and composure. I'm so sorry. I forgot I'm... I'm not... Just stop. Let's get back to the hotel. Blake walks away. The forlorn Oliver follows him. Meanwhile, back at the interior downtown hotel pool, night, Danny and Marco find Sylvia and Parker trying to wrangle Maggie's cartwheel act along the side of the pool. Marco rushes around the opposite side and catches Maggie in his arms. She looks up into his eyes, smitten. What angel wakes me from my flowery bed? Damn it. Parker, did you give her E? I told her... She got it from someone at the bar down the street. She winks at Parker. Yeah, we're planning to go there after this. It's karaoke night. Marco picks up the entranced Maggie. I'll take her back to the hotel room and meet you guys later. Thanks. No problem. Maggie caresses Marco's tight chest. She purrs and growls. Interior Blake's car moving night. Silence. Blake drives. Oliver sulks. Then... What did you mean you were there when I proposed to Sylvia? It doesn't matter. Forget it. If you came back here for something to happen between us, I'm sorry if I led you on in any way, but you gotta get past this. Sure. If things were different, I don't know. What do you mean? Like, did Sylvia tell you about the threesome offer we got a few months ago? Oliver studies Blake, curious to hear his version of events. We were in New York and this model, a dude, offered his money to do a threesome with us, like $500. We said, sure. You know how we we're down for anything. Oliver adjusts his crotch. It's moving again. We get to the guy's condo. He drops his pants and shows his well-shaped penis. And I remember being impressed by it. Like, a little more impressed than a straight guy should. Oliver tries to keep the erection down. Blake keeps focused on the story and driving. It was too much. I couldn't go through with it. See, for straight guys, if we try that, we can't go back to being straight. Society won't let us. Girls can experiment, we can. So I'll stick to straight shooting. He glances at Oliver crouched over, struggling to listen. Do you need to throw up? Nope, I'm good. Interior gay bar, closing time, night. Sylvia and Parker are on stage singing a 90s pop song. Danny sits at the booth, discussing the Bible with a gay couple. It's true. Christ says nothing about homosexuality or same-sex marriage. Our commandment is to love one another. The sin is in fornication. Sex outside of marriage? You two are married, so you qualify for God's blessings. Snarky. I'm so happy we passed the membership test. Sylvia and Parker finish their song, give a playful curtsy, then rescue the gay couple from Danny's sermon. That's enough, Pastor Dan. Where's Marco? Interior downtown hotel lobby later that night. Oliver and Blake enter to find Marco holding up an inebriated Maggie. How's she doing? Better. She lost her key and then I had to chase her around the lobby. Fun. Ugh, I wish I took E instead of these brownies. Where'd you guys go? You left Center something in the house. The three exchange glances. Yeah, I forgot something. I'll wait for the others. I'm gonna take a cab back to the house. Oliver exits as Sylvia, Danny, and Parker enter the lobby. They're zombies at this point. Where are you going? Oliver just brushes past without a word. To Blake. What, what happened? Touchy. Nothing. Okay, well, we'll take Queen to Tiana from here. The guys exit. Sylvia and Parker attend to Maggie. Interior bridal suite next morning. Close on Sylvia asleep, we pull away to find Blake spooning her. Warm sunlight coaxing them to awake. Sylvia's eyes open wide as she feels Blake's hot breath on her neck. Then she smiles and looks to the window ledge to see an animated bluebird whistling a tune, then another. 
Blake wakes up and goes straight into a Disney-like song to the tune of the bluebirds. It's a fairy tale morning. The room is consumed by a cartoon forest and animals singing the chorus with Blake. Gunshots, the birds fly away and animals scatter. Another gunshot to Blake's heart drops dead. She turns to see the killer is Oliver. She wakes up from the dream to find herself in bed between Maggie and Parker. Relief, sort of. Sylvia jumps out of bed, shoving Maggie off the edge. Interior of Josephine's house, Oliver's bedroom next morning. Oliver lies naked on the bed. He begins to stir. Something is obstructing his position. Finally, he rolls over to witness his morning wood. Jesus Christ! Curious, he reaches for it, gives it a little tug. Oh. Hold on Oliver's face as he begins to pleasure himself. Interior bridal suite, morning. Sylvia grabs her phone and sneaks out of the room. Interior Josephine's house, Oliver's bedroom, same time. Oliver just finished. It was quick. He lies back on the bed. Phone vibrates. Sylvia goes to voicemail, then listens. God damn it, Sylvia. What did you do with Blake last night? Grr, answer your fucking phone. We need to talk about the rehearsal dinner. Interior hotel lobby breakfast area later. Sylvia enters the lobby to find Marco in line. Hey, Chica. How's the queen of the fairies? She grabs a plate and piles everything she can find. Nesting in her flowery bed. Thanks, by the way. It was like wrangling a tiger. Her and Danny figure out something, or you're going to have the Hulk as the maid of honor. Yikes. Which is what I want to talk to you about. Okay. Marco looks around and then leads her at the back door to an empty exterior patio courtyard, continuous. She sits at a small table. Mark sits close to her. I just haven't had a chance to catch up with you since I arrived. Diving in. Angie and I broke up last week, for real this time. Who? Angie, the vocalist I've been working with. Oh. Oh. Uh, I'm so sorry. Well, here's the thing. I'm gay. You're the first person I've told. Except for Angie. And Maggie. But I wanted to tell you first. Sylvia coughs out some of the food, eyes wide. Marco gets up and paces about. Word vomit. I figured you probably already suspected. And, and I was going to tell you earlier, but I was so confused about the breakup and whether or not to come to the wedding. Then, then, I saw Oliver at the airport at the, and at the game last night. It, it all made sense. She goes pale and her breath shortens. Marco doesn't notice yet. He's giddy and wax and poetic. Crazy, I know. Then he switches to Portuguese for a beat. Sylvia hangs her head in her hands. Back to English. I remember first hearing his voice when he auditioned for Lysander. In character. Swift as a shadow, short as any dream, brief as a lightning in the colored night, that in a spleen unfolds both heaven and earth, and ere a man hath power to say, Behold, the jaws of darkness do devour it up. So quick, so it, bright, bright things, things come, come to confusion. confusion. Sylvia looks up as he turns back towards her. His excitement is contagious, and she can't help but smile. Yes! You would have been a much better Lysander. No, I thought he was marvelous. And it was so much fun. I wanted to keep in contact after he left, but we got caught up in our bicoastal lives. Sylvia chuckles at bicoastal. And with Angie. But now he's out and proud. Probably has hundreds of lovers. I doubt that. Well, you better keep an eye on your fiancé, Chica, because I saw the way he was eye-fucking him at the airport. I bet he's always had a thing for Blake. Then, holding her hand. Shit. I'm so sorry to drop all this on you. I've been holding it since I got here, and I need to let it out. She stands up slowly. Are you going to be okay? Uh, I think so. He holds her gently. Their eyes meet. In that moment, the Oliver and Sylvia forgets his female shell and becomes enamored by Marco's expression of love. Marco, high off his declaration for Oliver, feels the shift in Sylvia's aura. The moment lingers. Sylvia moves closer to him. Is she going to kiss him? Then... Hey, what the hell is going on? Sylvia and Marco step back from each other. WTF? How did, did you know you we were here? From? I can see you from the hallway. Right. Maggie glares at Marco. He tries to pass by her, but she blocks him. I'm gay, Maggie. I just came out to Sylvia. Relax. What are you talking about? You promised me, Sylvia. Oh, God. Maggie, he's in love with Oliver. It's not like that. Yes, I only want to rock out when there's cock out. Suspicious beat as Maggie studies the two of them, then lets him pass. Marco rolls his eyes and mutters something in Portuguese. To Sylvia. It's spa time. Interior Josephine's house, dining room, day. Oliver finds a handwritten note from Josephine on the table, because she's classy like that. Breakfast and lunch are in the oven. I'll be home after five. Bible study is tonight, so please get the chairs from the garage. I love you. Oliver smiles. Somber music plays over our final montage. 
Sylvia and the girls enjoying the full spa treatment. Oliver eating alone, ignoring calls and texts. Sylvia eating lunch with the bridal party and a few guests, comfortable in her identity. Oliver eats an entire chocolate cake and a pizza, runs shirtless around the neighborhood. Sylvia and Blake take some fun photos together. Oliver at the liquor store grabs a bottle of whiskey, scoffs at a happy white couple that cowl away from him. Oliver smiles. The montage ending brings us to interior Josephine's house living room evening. Josephine enters to find Oliver setting up chairs and arranging the room for guests. He is dressed for the evening. Hey, just in time. She sits on the couch, pensive. What's wrong? Your father used to lead these Bible studies. Oliver joins her on the couch. I'm the one that led him to Christ. And now he's spreading the gospel. Yeah, and spreading another woman's legs, probably. Josephine delivers a death look of divine power. Oliver shudders. What? Uh, I'm sorry? You were never this vulgar before. Please don't let those Hollywood people take your soul. Uh, okay. Then? Hey, why don't you invite that guy from the gun club to your Bible study tonight? You'll be around friends. No pressure, no obligation. You can just geek out on Bible scripture all night. I don't know. Crazy idea, but what if I tell William who God really wants you to be with? She gives him an incredulous look. Just spitballing here, that's all. But do what you feel like is right. I'll pray about it. Okay, good idea. Then checks the time. I gotta go. Can I borrow your car tonight? Sure, have fun. You too. Don't wait up. He gives her a hug and quickly exits. Exterior Tulsa Rose Garden Center, mansion front, night. The officiant stands with Blake under the arch at the top of the steps. Okay, Danny and Maggie will lead, followed by Oliver and Parker. Then Mark will escort Grandmother Chatterley. The procession begins. Danny and Maggie share a look. Nostalgia? Regret? Oliver sneaks a sip from a flask. Hey, sharing's caring. He hands her the flask. She takes a healthy swig and walks up the aisle. Marco escorts Grandma Chatterley, frail and soft-spoken. He watches Oliver. Finally, Sylvia takes the hand of a weathered and forlorn male, Mr. Chatterley. You look amazing. And good call on not inviting your mother. She would have turned this into one of her pagan healing retreats. Had us dancing naked around a cauldron. He escorts her up the aisle. Everyone watches with smiles except Oliver. He just glares and sips on his flask. Sylvia avoids eye contact. They reach the steps. Mr. Chatterley hands her off to Blake. All right, folks, so this is how this is going to go. I'll start out with a little bit of an introduction, something along the lines of family, friends, we are gathered here today, etc., etc. I'll talk about her, how lovely a couple you two are, how strong your love is. Blake and Sylvia gaze deep into each other's eyes. Danny glances at Maggie. Then read from one of the scriptures you selected. You'll each say your vows and exchange rings. Oliver takes a long swig from the flask. I'll pronounce you husband and wife and then you rap battle for a price. Interior South Room reception hall moments later, towards the end of dinner, classical music plays from the speakers over the scene. At the long dinner table, the family members sit on one side, bridesmaids and groomsmen sit on the opposite side, with Blake and Sylvia in the middle. Maggie flanks Sylvia, Oliver flanks Blake. To Oliver. Dude, you want to slow down? Not really. It's amazing how much I can drink from this body. Oliver downs his flask and reaches for a glass of wine. Close to Blake. Hey, I gotta talk to you about something. It's really important. The waiter brings Oliver another glass of wine. He downs half of it. What's up? Whisper. I've been thinking about what you said last night. The threesome? Not now. <laughs> no, come on. You're right. It can change. Your sexuality? Stop. Blake glances at Sylvia. She smiles at him. We could experiment and no one has to know. Whisper. Forget what I said last night. I was just being nice. Sylvia leans in. What the hell is going on? To Sylvia. We had a threesome while you were gone. I never touched it. Uh-oh. That was louder than he expected. Everyone looks at Blake. The, the, ca the cake. She, she thinks I, I tasted the cake. It's really tempting. <laughs> Awkward laughs from everyone. Maggie is suspicious. Why did you have a threesome? Are you jealous because we never asked you? Through his teeth. We've never had a threesome. Stop talking about it. Sylvia, what the fuck is he saying? Nothing. Sylvia's not who you think right now. Blake is fuming. Oliver, you really need to stop. Now Danny leans in. What's wrong with Sylvia? You can't marry Sylvia! Collective gas! Oliver quickly covers his mouth. Oh, shit! She slumps in her chair and attempts to hide her head in her hands. Why? Oliver, if you say another word, I swear I'll jump kick you back into the closet. Everyone waits anxiously for an answer. Uh, cuz... 
I, I'm... Sylvia is willing the floor to open up and swallow her. Parker swoops in with, So happy for Blake and love him very much. It feels like you're losing your best friend. It's scary. We all kind of feel that way a little at first. That's the nature of friendships and marriage. Um, but we're all really happy for Blake and Sylvia and wish them the best. Oliver surrenders with a nod. The tension subsides. Everyone breathes relief and applauds at the sweet gesture. Thanks, P. Oliver glances at Sylvia. Let's toast to the happy couple. May they weather the storms of uncertainty and embrace the future. Oliver exits. Maggie gives Sylvia another glass of champagne and a stern look. Exterior Tulsa Rose Garden Center moments later. Marco exits the building. He finds Oliver sitting on the steps, crying. I'm stuck in this body forever. So you feel like a, wo like a woman inside sometimes? Embrace it! No, it's not that. Never mind. Let me drive you home. Interior South Room Reception Hall, same time. Blake stands up to address the guests. Thank you all for coming tonight. I apologize for the scare. It's just cold feet. But I assure you this woman is the one I want. The love of my life and my soulmate. Nothing can change that. Sylvia blushes. It's everything Oliver has wanted to hear. Everyone applauds. You're welcome to stay for a little while longer. There's dessert on the way. But Sylvia and I have other dessert plans. Collective oohs and applause from everyone as Blake escorts a surprise Sylvia from the table. Danny and Maggie exchange a look. Interior hotel lobby moments later. Blake rushes Sylvia toward their room. Come on, tell me what's going on. Where are the guys going to stay tonight? Maggie said you were doing something with your lawyer buddies. They're staying at our place. Stop worrying. Blake grins. Interior groomsman suite night and leads her into the suite which is now lavished with every cheesy expression of love. A bed covered in rose petals and candle lights. Wow. Baby making music plays from an iPod music player. The table has a dessert dish on it. Your favorite dessert? Sylvia opens the lid to see a decadent chocolate cake. I had the chef downstairs make it the way your mama made it. Blake cuts a small slice and feeds it to her. Well? Mmm. It's delicious. That's it? I've seen you threaten the lives of chefs for not having this cake in their restaurants. Really, it's amazing. Why are you doing this? The honeymoon isn't until... He kisses her lustily on the lips, tasting the chocolate. I couldn't wait. Then he picks her up and carries her to the bed. Off Sylvia's look, blushing. Oliver's car, Josephine's house, night. Marco parks the car in the driveway. It's quiet. Oliver stares at the window at the house. Marco's nervous, gathering courage. Are you feeling better? Yeah, I guess. Thanks for the ride. I needed to get out of there. I know, same here. Marco places his hand on Oliver's thigh. Oliver glances at Marco's hand, then at Marco's hypnotic gaze. Um, what's happening? You tell me. You're gay? His hand moves up Oliver's thigh, daring a reaction. It does. Oliver is aroused. But I thought... Oh, oh, there it goes again. Marco lunges across the seat and kisses Oliver deep and lustily. Oliver goes with it for a beat, then pulls away. Marco grins at Oliver's erection. Let's go inside. Oliver nods. Interior groomsman suite, same time. Blake quickly undresses Sylvia and then gets undressed, both down to their sexy underwear. He lays her back on the bed and devours her with kisses and caresses, desperately trying to confirm his heterosexuality. Sylvia is hesitant at first, but can't break the spell of his primal desire. Then Blake stops. He senses something off. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. It's, um, it's great. I'm just so overwhelmed. Oh, in a good way, I hope. Yeah, I think I ate too much. Is it cool if we just lay here? Sure. I'm sorry. I know you were expecting some mind-blowing sex. I certainly was. No, it's cool. Blake strokes her hair, gazes into her eyes. Sylvia can barely handle the weight of his genuine desire. She looks away. Interior, Oliver's bedroom, night. Marco has Oliver pinned on the bed, kissing him all over. Both are shirtless. He goes for Oliver's zipper. Look, I'm really happy that you're out and all, but things have kind of changed since... Marco pulls off Oliver's pants like a pro, goes down on him. Since... Um... On Oliver, eyes closed, breathing quickens. Holy shit. Blake. Blake. Oh my god, Blake. Return to scene. Marco stops. He looks up at Oliver. Seriously? What? You said his name three times already. He's still on your mind. Well, yeah, cause... I'm... That's what I was trying to explain. I can imagine this uh, being a really big moment for you, but the thing is, 
The timing is really bad. Marco gets up and grabs his shirt. Look, you're in love with Blake and using me as a fill-in. Fill-in? <laughs> a substitute or whatever. I thought I could change your mind, make you see. I don't know, it's stupid. No, it's not. It, it, it's really sweet. I broke up with Angie and came here to take a chance on you. But it's obvious you want a guy like Blake. I, I do, but not, not the way you see it now. What does that mean? What the hell is so special about Blake? Oliver only offers an apologetic look. Forget it. And Marco exits. Interior groomsman suite later that night. Sylvia lies wide awake, restless, shameful. She glances at him, asleep, then grabs her phone and sneaks out, but not before stealing a slice of that decadent cake. Interior, Oliver's bedroom, same time. The phone vibrates on the desk next to the bed where Oliver is passed out of sleep. Hey, call me when you get up. Interior hallway continuous. Sylvia ends the call, glances at her reflection in the mirror, leans in it closer to it, examining her eyes. Can Oliver see himself inside her eyes? She turns out the lights and exits. Interior, Oliver's bedroom next morning. Oliver wakes up with a hangover from the depths of hell. Squints at the sunlight entering the room, groans at the sight of himself. Phone vibrates. Oh, go away. It doesn't. Vibrates again. He gives in. Like death. I think I should stay here. I'm gonna call it off. What? Are you serious? Interior, bridal suite, bathroom, same time. Sylvia sits in the, on the toilet seat and whispers in the phone. She's wrapped in a bath towel, hair half done. I, I don't know. I think so. Knock, knock. Hey, I have one hour to create magic with your hair, and Parker still has to do your makeup. What happened? What the hell are you doing? Meet me in the magical forest in an hour. Ends call. Exits the bathroom. Interior Josephine's house, dining room, moments later. Oliver finds Joseph and William enjoying breakfast together. Morning, sweetheart. How was the rehearsal? Fine. Did he... did you guys? Excuse me, mister? Did we what? I just got here. Relax. To William. No, not that boy. Sorry. I didn't mean to imply... You look like you need coffee. Yes, please. To go. William pours him a cup. William is my plus one. That's awesome. Thanks for the vote of confidence. She told me you spoke to her about me. He hands Oliver the coffee. Oliver and Josephine share a look. You got a special lady waiting for you in L.A.? Yes, he does. She does movies or something, right? Who? The girl you're seeing. Oliver groans. Is she still out of the country? I don't even know her name. Tell us about her. A beat as Oliver puts down the coffee and proceeds to word vomit. Okay, there is no girl. I lied. The truth is I'm gay. I love men. Why the lie? Because I'm horrible at communicating anything important to people I love? I'm always in my head. I'm selfish. I run away from confrontation, then come back here and wish for things to go my way. Deep breath. Sips the coffee. Thanks for the coffee. Then he exits. Off William and Josephine's look of bewilderment and horror. Interior wedding mansion, bride room, later that morning. Maggie and Parker are doing Sylvia's hair and makeup. The wedding dress looms behind them on a hanger. Okay. Everyone gets last minute case of cold feet no matter how sure they are. But you look like you ate someone's cold feet. Sylvia's phone vibrates with a text from Oliver. Shit. Uh, I gotta meet with the photographer about... He needs to show me something in the rose garden. I'll be right back. Off Maggie's look. I promise. They let her go. Exterior wedding mansion, rear exit moments later. Sylvia sneaks out the back and runs barefoot towards the... Exterior of the park forest morning where Oliver awaits by a tree. So you're really going to do it? I think so. Blake blindsided me with this really romantic evening at the hotel and- Did you have sex with him? No. I couldn't do it. I kissed him. At the center of the universe. That's where you went? What happened? I thought he was going to punch me in the face. I've never seen him like that before and it scared me. That explains the surprise last night and the aggression. We've really fucked him up. Yeah. Then I almost slept with Marco last night. What? It was adorable. Of course, he's gay. No wonder Angie bailed. I looked into Blake's eyes and saw a future with you and not me. I would be right back where I started, in the closet living a lie. At Sylvia's body. At least that closet looks hot. Beat. Both share a caring smile. I'm really sorry. He's your man. You can make him happy better than me. I'm sorry too. I should have told you before it all started with Blake. Then? So quick, bright things come to confusion. They share a laugh and then hug. I hate that damn play. Yeah, fuck that play. With the true display of caring friends, the gust of wind and glitter restores amends. The spell is lifted. 
Oliver and Sylvia quickly pull out the hug and glance at each other. We're, We're back! back! They hug each other, then Sylvia slaps him. No more wishes! Ouch! Deal. Good. There's still time for me to get married. She hops on his back. Make haste! Yes, milady! And he carries her out of the forest. Exterior of the wedding mansion, rear exit day. A quick haste later, Oliver drops her off. She starts to go inside, then turns back. Oh, I told your mom you're gay. Sorry. Shit! What'd she say? I didn't stay to hear a response. She runs back inside. Interior wedding mansion foyer, same time. Oliver joins Blake and the groomsmen. I'm sorry about everything. I know. Blake just responds with an anxious gaze, then grabs Oliver's face, pulls it close to his, his eyes searching deep into Oliver's. What are you doing? I love you, ma'am. Yeah, I love you too. Blake releases him and faces the entrance. Danny and Marco glare at Oliver. He shrugs back at them. Interior wedding mansion, bride room, same time. Sylvia rushes inside. Where in the hell? Sylvia silences her with a hug. Thank you for everything. Then hugs Parker. Maggie is speechless. I love you both. Let's do this. Exterior wedding mansion front, moments later. Sylvia finally emerges from the forest path. Mr. Chatterley escorts her down the aisle. Everyone stands as the music plays. Sylvia is handed off to Blake. He gives an apologetic look. Officiant is about to begin. Family friends were gathered here on this beautiful Saturday morning to witness- I'm sorry. I have something to say. Oh, shit. Blake turns to Oliver, then back to Sylvia. Is it about Chicago? Because I don't care anymore, really. No. I... I can't marry you. It would be dishonest. I think I've been lying to myself about who I am. Collective gasps. Confusion. Oh, God, you didn't switch with someone, did you? Blake regards Oliver. What? I just feel there are some things about myself that I need to work out. I've been so confused since that night in New York, and I now know what it is. Blake confronts everyone. I'm in love with Oliver. To Oliver. I should have seen it the first time you came out to me. No, 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 listen, you're not gay. That was me at the center of the universe last night. How is that even possible? The guests are up in gossip and panic. Maggie's on the verge of a stroke. Parker attends to her. Oh, okay, okay, everyone just, everyone just calm down. Don't go anywhere, just give us a minute. Oliver pulls Blake back inside the foyer. Sylvia joins them, to Blake. This is my fault. You're right. I came back here with this desperate idea of changing you, but it ended up changing myself instead. But not in a good way. In the worst way. Yeah. Selfish and dickheaded way. To Sylvia. Okay. Okay. To Blake. And I manipulated Sylvia into helping me. Helping you hook up with me? No! no. Just tell me who I'm marrying today. Sylvia! Me. It was always going to be Sylvia. So I'm not gay? Even though we... At Sylvia. Tried that thing? You're as straight as they come. Oliver and Sylvia share a knowing look. Oh, thank God. No offense. It's just the, the past three days I felt like I was becoming someone else. Blake, you're just a guy who's curious about every experience. It's a quality that both Sylvia and I admire. Oliver brings the two together. Look, Sylvia is the love of your life and soulmate. You wanted my blessing to marry her, right? You haven't. The threesome hug. Exterior wedding mansion front continuous. The threesome take their places again. Oliver smiles at Marco. Polymori is always an option, just throwing that out there. Moments later, Blake and Sylvia kiss. Cheers. Applause. We see William sitting next to Josephine. They share a smile. The music continues. Blake and Sylvia pull away from each other and glance at Oliver. Blake takes her arm and escorts her down the aisle. Everyone watches the procession with bewilderment and joy. Interior south room reception hall, night. Music continues with Marco at the DJ booth next to Parker. On the dance floor, we find Danny and Maggie. I've actually thought a lot about where we are, and you're right. It's unfair to suddenly expect to you be on board with celibacy. It's not about that. I'm really trying to make a lifestyle change, and I want you to be a part of it. Danny, no one changes because they just want to. I don't care if you want to apply for seminary and be celibate. Well, sort of. But you can't treat me like some dead skin you have to shed before changing. Right. I'm sorry. And maybe you and God can include me in some of these decisions. Will do. As they kiss, we follow Oliver to William and Josephine's table. Mom, I'm really sorry I lied about the girlfriend. Sweetie, what did you think I was going to do? Throw me into a lake of fire? To William. Oh, I was tempted to. Don't get it twisted. 
Yes, she was. I had to talk her out of chasing you down. But you're still my son, and I love you very much. That love doesn't change. Ever. They hug. To William. Well, it's nice to finally be... I mean, see you again. Take care of her. They shake hands. Blake and Sylvia dance close. You know, I can wear a strap-on, if you want. Hmm, how big are we talking? Oh, how big do you need? Size queen? They laugh and kiss. At a table, misanthrope hipster and emo vampire hold each other while getting high. Oliver approaches Marco and pulls him on the dance floor. The party continues under the stars. It's magical. It's romantic. Sigh. Interior West Hollywood Gay Club night. Oliver is performing the last part of a classic pop song with Marco. It's karaoke night again. Same regulars, but now they're paying attention. The song finishes with a few excited applause. Oliver and Marco take a bow. Exterior Santa Monica Boulevard moments later. Oliver and Marco are holding hands and walking down the street, bar hopping. A voicemail message that plays over the action with the familiar voices of Blake and Sylvia. Hey Ollie, it's us. We found a place in Chicago. I start work at the new firm, not my dad's, thank God. So we're having a housewarming party next month, probably. You're with Marco right now, aren't you? Are you guys fucking? Are you gonna get married? Oh my God, I'm calling Matron of Honor right now. To Sylvia. Can I finish? Interior, Oliver's studio apartment, same night. Oliver and Marco are in bed, kissing, feeling, pulling each other's clothes off. The voice message continues. Back to Oliver. And this firm hooked me up with the season tickets to the Chicago Fire Games? We could check that out. Well, my ad agency gets tickets to the Bears. So if we want to watch actual men play sports... Jesus, can you let up on the soccer hate? Anyway, invite Marco. Danny and Maggie are coming too. Oliver and Marco are now down to their briefs. Is he a top or bottom? Okay, we'll let you guys do your thing. Call us whenever. Love you, man. The call ends. Oliver reaches for the lamplight. On the switch of the light, we cut to end credits.